Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 28th of August, and as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local information for your village and your part of Alaska. You can do that easily by calling us at 1-800-472-0391. On your phone, type in mobile.weather.gov. That's M-O-B-I-L-E dot weather.gov. And you can type in your village or your city name, your place name there, hit go, and that should localize your information into a mobile-friendly version of the forecast. From there, make sure you share that to your home screen, save it however your phone or mobile device works, and you will instantly have a very quick and low bandwidth option to get more weather information wherever you are and wherever you have service. Uh, make sure you try that out anytime. Weather.gov slash Alaska on your PC or uh, laptop there. And of course, if you can't find what you're looking for, I'm happy to help you any way I can. David.Snyder, NOAA.gov. Let's take a look at fire danger. What? There's fire danger. Just a little bit, not much. <laughs> Just a little bit, maybe along the Chukchi coast. The indices are barely there. This is probably going to be about the last week we talk about fire danger. There's still some drier weather across the Chukchi coast but not for much longer. Clouds are coming in, uh, another cold front's coming in, northern winds are coming in, so let's just make that go away. Here's a look at the satellite picture. As we get into Saturday, we have a low pressure system here across the eastern Gulf. It's been sweeping in some heavier amounts of rainfall today across central and southern parts of southeast. Last night came into Juneau, slowed things down a little bit at the airport. As you look at cloud cover across the interior, underneath that is some rainfall on the northern side of the Alaska range, including the Denali Park area up north. A band of clouds working its way into the Chukchi Coast. Another front is lining up behind that. Out across the uh, open waters of the Bering, we have another circulation here. Two sections of low pressure, one of those working rainfall in across the central and eastern chain and into the Alaska Peninsula, and we will continue to see that play out as we go through the rest of the week. But in between all these weather systems are two areas of high pressure, one of those trying to build across the western and the southwestern parts of the interior and south central. Well, that means tonight there could be uh, plenty of uh, clear skies. If there's still any remnants of a solar storm out there, if you're under that, make sure you look up. And uh, you'll probably end up looking at a little bit of fog, at least by tomorrow morning, as uh, the ground is fairly wet in many locations. Here's the map of the fronts, and low pressure sitting across the northern Gulf is down to about 1,005 millibars. Some pockets of moderate to occasionally heavy rain working their way through southeast. Pretty typical fall weather kind of stuff. High pressure across the YK Delta is building at 1,025 millibars. One of many disturbances coming out of the north over the next couple days has made its way up to the Brooks Range, a cold front right up against the uh, summits there. And in between high pressure and low pressure, we have some pockets of rainfall. Most of that, again, is on the north side of the Alaska Range and the higher terrain. Some of that in the lower Koyukuk around Galena and out across the middle Yukon Valley. Out west, low pressure very close to the Aleutians, around 991 millibars, uh, 997 around the triple point there. And some rain and certainly some low clouds and fog across the Aleutians. So, uh, that's to be expected for the rest of the night. Now, as we get into early tomorrow morning, low pressure will move into the central bearing around 988 millibars. Showers and areas of drizzle along the frontal boundary there and wrapping in behind that to places like Kiska and Shemya. High pressure builds into Norton Sound at 1,018 millibars. On the south side of that, we expect to see fog. Some of that also over the Cook Inlet region. High pressure will extend a little bit east of the Alaska Range, but there will be uh, areas of clouds and probably some showers lingering along that boundary. Up north, you can see the next cold wave trying to make its way southward into the Chukchi coastline and the north slope ahead of that rainfall uh, closer to the front. A better chance that'll mix in with rain and snow and out over the open water, a decent chance there'll be snow falling there. As that continues southward, we'll likely see that impact some of the higher terrain as we get into your Wednesday. Low pressure sitting across the Yukon stretches all the way up into the Beaufort Sea and we'll still have a low area of, a uh, weak area of low pressure sitting just offshore of the outer coast uh, around southeast. Showers there ahead of that and behind that probably some fog in the northern parts of southeast as we get into tonight and early tomorrow morning. By Wednesday, high pressure is still in charge of the interior. You can see it's losing ground though. Clouds are starting to fill back in and across south central it looks like a mighty fine day. So. If you have the opportunity to do whatever you need to do outside, Wednesday might just be your day to fly, to drive, to boat, whatever. Pick berries, you got it. 
Wednesday's probably your day in South Central. For Southeast, showers continue for the Central and Southern parts of Southeast. They're still trying to scrub away some of that, but drier air is headed your way, so keep that in mind for your Thursday. And out across the West, 988 millibar low there really hasn't changed a whole lot since uh, uh, we last looked at it. That'll continue to sit across the central bearing. You notice we have a pretty long fetch of westerly flow coming in behind this. So this will likely start to fall apart as we get into Wednesday afternoon, and the focus will be a little bit more on the Gulf as we head into Wednesday night and into Thursday. Up north, the front is now ashore. Areas of low cloud, stratus, fog, rain, and drizzle all coming along with that. But notice the coldest air with this is probably going to be across the, Chuck, or the Beaufort Sea and close to the coast. So rain and snow will likely mix together. High pressure shifts southward. And what's that? Well, it could be a little bit of convection. So if you're flying around the Eagle area south of Fort Yukon, east of Fairbanks, and northeast of North Pole, and north of Northway, well, watch for maybe the possibility of a shower or even a brief thunderstorm. It looks like that uh, may still have just enough juice in the atmosphere to start that up. As we get into Thursday, that risk that we saw here across the eastern interior is going to shift to the Tau Ketanus. It will be brief, but again, there could be some convection in the area, so keep that in mind. We'll have a little bit of an onshore flow. There's still going to be an opportunity for some light rain in southeast, but there's also going to be an opportunity for some of that to break up under the ridge. So we're hoping for at least a little bit of a, a dry uh, round of weather between rainfall in southeast. Another trough sweeping through. Remember, this is what we were watching over here. That's falling apart. The low pressure system out across the bearing still holding around 988 millibars. That too is sweeping in a broad area of uh, westerlies moving into south and western Alaska. And up north, rain and snow showers expected across the north slope. High pressure will build in behind that, trying to dry things out. But what you're not seeing here right under the front is probably a thin strip of snow across the higher train of the Brooks Range and maybe along the Dalton Highway as well. Uh, forecasters in Fairbanks suggest that maybe as much as an inch or so is possible. So if you're driving northward or southward in the coming days, uh, Thursday and into Friday, there's a decent chance that you're going to run into at least some snow. Not a lot of snow, but enough snow that you're going to notice it as uh, one of those uh, late fall, early summer, uh, late summer, early fall kind of situations where you're going, man, it's about that time, right? So as we approach Labor Day weekend, uh, that certainly looks like that could be a possibility, but just up north. Now, as we look at temperatures as we get into tonight, we're looking at readings that are back in the mid to upper 30s for most of the coastal plain north of the Brooks Range, lower to mid 40s for the Chukchi Coast into the Kotzebue Sound region. We start to creep up into the mid 40s to even uh, upper 40s as you get into Bristol Bay and the YK Delta. Closer to 50 degrees for Cold Bay, False Pass down toward uh, Sand Point, southeast, you're looking at temps in the lower 50s tonight. Mid 40s, even cooler than that, perhaps around the Cook Inlet region and Prince William Sound, 37 in Gulf Can, up to 63 there for Wednesday. Low to mid 60s for southeast, uh, places like Capital City looking at 66. Kodiak Island closer to the low 60s, mid 50s for the chain, 54 way out in Kiska and Shemya, 49 around Savunga and Gamble for Unilocleat, about 55 degrees there, Kotzebue, 52, Wainwright, Close to 41. Utkiavik around 41 degrees. Kaktovik 42. Overnight low temperatures for Thursday morning back in the mid 30s. So again, it's cool, but not super cold. 32 around Utkiavik. Uh, Galena all the way out toward the coast. Mid to upper 40s there. Bethel about 47. Upper 40s and lower 50s for southeast. South central a little bit closer to 50 degrees. 52 around Kodiak. Uh, King Salmon and Dillingham closer to 50 degrees. The Fairbanks region back in the mid-40s. And Eagle about 39, 36 for Arctic Village. A little sign of the cold weather there. 30s and 40s for the North Slope for Thursday afternoon. 50s for most of the Koyukuk and Lower Yukon Valley. Uh, Mid-50s around the coast. Nunavak Island about 53 there around McCorrick. 52 in St. Paul. Southeast still holding close to 60 in upper 50s and low 60s for South Central. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to your aviation weather now, IFR conditions are going to last a, a pretty a long time across uh, the Bering Sea and for many areas very close to the west and southwestern coast up through the Alaska Peninsula. Through the central and eastern Gulf of Alaska, you'll probably see IFR spreading northward across the central and eastern inner channels as we get through your Wednesday morning and look for IFR spreading inland across the north slope and in and over 
the Brooks Range into the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys there as colder air is sweeping southward. You'll see some of that peel back a little bit in the afternoon. I look for IFR conditions to last around the Chukchi Coast and into the central and western Beaufort Sea Coast. Not a big change at all across the west coast, but you will see more of that IFR pushing inland to places like Bethel and Dillingham and getting very close to uh, King Salmon and uh, likely uh, encountering uh, Lake Iliamna with at least a little bit of MVFR. We'll look for IFR conditions to wrap in a little bit further northward across the north and eastern gulf, but uh, MVFR conditions should be expected across the southern inner channels of southeast. Northern areas may linger under VFR conditions for the afternoon. IFR takes over more of the North Slope and the Brooks Range as we get in to your Thursday morning. IFR also pushes inland even more up the Kuskokwim Valley and the lower and middle Yukon Valleys there. Uh, across the western Alaska Range into parts of Resurrection Bay in the northern Gulf. MVFR through a large part of the Cook Inlet region as well as some of the Susitna Valley and the central and western parts of the chain start to see a few hit and miss areas of VFR developing on Thursday morning. Uh, the drier air starts to push in a little bit more for Thursday afternoon out west, but you can see that IFR is still hanging over southwest. MVFR through a large part of the Yukon Valley southward. Uh, some breaks across Cook Inlet in the Kenai Peninsula, but widespread IFR Thursday afternoon for uh, parts of the Wrangell-St. Elias region, eastern sections of Prince William Sound, and again, all of southeast for your Thursday. Here's a look at your pass conditions now. For Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass, we expect to see at least MVFR conditions through Wednesday. There may be some minor improvements there, but remember, colder air and a front will be in the vicinity. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, expecting to see improvements throughout the day to VFR for your Wednesday. Probably won't be the case again on Thursday, though, so plan accordingly. Rainy Pass, looking for even more improvement to VFR by the afternoon. Windy Pass may start at IFR conditions, but we expect a change in improvement to VFR as the day goes on. Isabel Pass may see similar improvements. Look for Mentasta Pass to see VFR conditions developing there on Wednesday. Tanita Pass looks pretty good through most of the day. You probably will be okay there, at least for Wednesday. Portage Pass also pretty good so far for your Wednesday. Not the case again on Thursday. And Chilkoot and White Pass, again, looks pretty good for your midweek travel plans there. Wednesday morning, you'll notice that uh, the freezing levels are starting to rise here across the West Coast, 6, 8, even 14,000 foot levels across the eastern chain into the Alaska Peninsula, and uh, also looking pretty good across southeast levels there between 8 and 10,000 feet. The interior is still holding on above freezing, but the 2,000 foot line is just offshore for tomorrow morning. Thursday, it's going to look a lot different. We're going to start to see a lot of this cold air moving in across the eastern interior and the north slope. Icing potential is still pretty high up there. Levels at or above 8,000 feet for right now, but the moisture is certainly there, and the cold air is, is coming in quick, so uh, plan accordingly for that. Right now, at worst, we see isolated moderate threats across the, uh, the Brooks Range and the North Slope, and, of course, the lingering effects of low pressure out in the Bering Sea. Levels there at above 10,000 feet. There's the low that's doing that. You can see the fast track of the subtropical jet coming in across the illusions right now, 100 to 135 knots, and then wrapping around high pressure that's really going to stay planted across the Gulf of Alaska for the foreseeable future. And while we won't have this really sharply defined ridge, it will probably flatten out a little bit more. That means a little bit of a faster track for some of this moisture to zip across the Gulf of Alaska again. The thing to watch is this northern jet stream here. As this starts pushing its way southward, that's going to give us all a little bit more of a taste of fall, if not early winter in some cases in the Brooks Range. 9,000 foot winds, you can see the ridge of high pressure here affecting winds coming in from the south and west over southwest Alaska. And on the east side of the ridge is southeastern Alaska in the interior. Wind speeds there anywhere from 10 to 25 knots on the inside for the north slope, 35 knots. And across the Gulf Coast, about 20 to 40 knots. Incoming winds for the west coast anywhere from about 15 to 35 knots, the strongest of which will be right over the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island. Southeast looking at northwesterly winds around 20 knots, the interior between 15 and 25 knots generally coming in from the west. So what about turbulence? Well, up north with the front coming in, watch for at least a little bit of chop below 4,000 feet. And there's actually a risk for a little bit of thunderstorm activity tomorrow around Eagle in the upper Yukon Valley. Very isolated, but it certainly is there. And across southwestern Alaska, we won't be surprised to see chop below 4,000 feet. A better chance for considerable moderate for the Alaska Peninsula and all of the Aleutian chain as you go through your Wednesday. Hello, I'm a Gozar series weather satellite orbiting 22,000 miles above Earth. I can see a lot of cool stuff from up here, and I take pictures of it with my spiffy camera that has 16 different settings. 
I have such good eyesight, I can see clouds, snow, smoke, smog, and ash. So I can warn you about dangerous conditions and help you avoid them. When storms are brewing, I watch them closely and help with hurricane, tornado, and flood warnings to help keep you safe. And my lightning mapper tracks lightning strikes way up in the sky, even through dark, dense clouds. I also help with search and rescue missions. I listen for distress signals from emergency beacons and tell search and rescue teams just where to find people who need help. But even when I'm keeping a close eye on Earth, I'm monitoring weather out here in space, too! I watch the sun for big bursts of energy, which send waves of radiation toward Earth that can affect power grids, block communication with planes, cause errors in GPS, and damage satellites. Space weather is also very dangerous for astronauts working outside the International Space Station. I warn them so they can get inside where they'll be safe. So the next time you watch a weather report or check your phone for the forecast, remember, that's me. So look to the sky and wave. I'll be here. Things are looking pretty bad down there. But don't worry, I'm going to give weather forecasters a heads up and help you stay safe. I'm a Gozar series weather satellite, and one of my jobs is to keep an eye on Earth's weather as I orbit above. But I'm 22,000 miles above Earth. How does your local weather forecaster know what I see all the way up here? First, I have to figure out what's going on. I point my special camera at the Earth and take pictures of the clouds I see below. My pictures show where the clouds are, but I also take lots of other notes about the clouds. For example, how high they reach into the atmosphere, how much rain they might cause, and when a severe storm may be forming. But I can't keep all of this information to myself. I have to share it with weather forecasters down on Earth. A big antenna is waiting for my call. Since I'm a satellite, I send my pictures and notes in a computer language of ones and zeros. Luckily, the antenna speaks my language. Computers connected to the antenna organize my notes and combine all of the pictures and cloud information and translate them into weather maps. They send a version of the maps back up to me. I'll hold on to these for later. Another copy of the maps is split into smaller pieces. This helps the maps move faster from one place to another. The map pieces are then sent for processing before being sent back up in the sky to a communication satellite. From there, the maps are picked up by antennas at the National Weather Service forecast offices in each region. There are more than 100 offices. I also take the maps that I received and send them out to companies that specialize in making the maps more colorful and better for viewing on TVs and computers. The colorful maps and the maps from the forecast offices then go to your local weather forecaster. The forecaster combines the information from these maps with lots of other information, like model forecast data and radar data, to make predictions about the upcoming weather in your area. And that's how I help you find out if bad weather is going to ruin your afternoon plans. You're welcome.
Soon it will be my time to shine. In outer space. I'm the GOES-R satellite. That stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite. And the R stands for my order in this series of weather satellites. Like my older siblings before me, I'll do a lot for watching weather, but I'm pretty special because I have a lot of new gadgets. I'm originally from Colorado, but my journey to space has a few stops along the way. I'll be shipped in a very special satellite shipping container to Kennedy Space Center. Moving me around is not easy. I'm over 18 feet wide and weigh 6,000 pounds. And then things get really exciting. I get loaded onto an Atlas V-541 launch vehicle. A big rocket! Woo! After Atlas and I blast off together, my compartment separates from the launch vehicle and I continue to climb higher and higher. Then I break away completely and unfurl my solar panel and antenna. <sighs> After that, I have to use my thrusters to get into just the right position, 22,000 miles above the ground and traveling 1.9 miles per second to keep up with Earth's rotation. And then I can officially start my job along with my fellow GOES sisters, where I take advanced pictures for more accurate weather forecasts, map lightning in real time, and improve the monitoring of the sun's activity. It's going to be so awesome! I can't wait! And now, marine weather around Alaska. On to your marine weather now, and a quick check of the sea ice shows uh, areas above 80% concentration still holding very close to Kaktovik. Uh, the region that we've been watching northeast of Ukyavik and north of Prudhoe Bay is shrinking in size here. You can see still a lot of marginal ice, though, uh, where that was holding all the way up toward the coast including around Prudhoe Bay, east toward the demarcation point, and just northeast of Point Barrow. Uh, everything to the south and west in the Chukchi remains sea ice free at this point. You can check this map out anytime you like. Simply head to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice and you'll get not only the analysis but also the forecast and a look at sea surface temperatures as well as seasonal outlooks and a new one is in the works so stay tuned for that. Here's a look at southeast forecast in the marine areas now we're talking about 10 to 20 knots from the north and west and the inside passage here anywhere from two to four feet across the outer coast Northwesterlies 10 to 15 knots, anywhere from 7 to about 9 feet. The higher seas down around the Dixon entrance on Wednesday. For Thursday, winds come in from the west and southwest. That onshore flow will bring you 6-foot seas in most areas across the outer coast. Inside waters, you're looking at about 2 to 4 feet. The higher seas around the Lynn Canal with a steady south wind up to 20 knots there on Thursday. For Wednesday in Prince William Sound, northerlies uh, about 10 knots there with two foot seas and light winds coming down Cook Inlet as well. Wednesday looks like a fairly nice day. South and easterly winds in the western barrens. The eastern barrens you're looking at 15 knots with a five foot sea. Southwesterlies outside of the Resurrection Bay area. Four foot seas across the northern gulf. As we get into Thursday with the next wave of weather coming in, we're going to see a sharp increase in winds and seas. The seas coming up to about 8 to 11 feet there in the northwest gulf. South and westerlies outside of Hitchinbrook entrance, those coming in around 30 knots with seven foot seas. Easterlies remain light inside of Prince William Sound, especially early in the day. And west and southwesterlies are building quickly into Cook Inlet, 25 to 30 knots there with about uh, five to as high as eight foot seas south and west of Clam Gulch and down into. Uh, areas around Cashmack Bay and just outside. So beware of some changes coming in quick there. For Wednesday, south and westerlies inside of Bristol Bay, 20 to 30 knots, looking for three foot seas in the bay, eight foot seas down the Bering Sea coast, southwesterlies on either side of Kodiak Island and down the Alaska Peninsula, looking at seven to 10 foot seas there on a 15 to 25 knot wind. Obviously, you can see the changes in the Bering Sea. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But some of it is reaching its way into Bristol Bay. 30 to 35 knots there across the Bering Sea coast and into the bay itself. 13-foot seas, 18-foot seas down the coast, 
and 8 to 11 foot seas developing across the northern Gulf. Inside of Shelikov Strait, 30 knots coming in from the west, 6 foot seas there, 25 knots on the other side of Kodiak Island. All right, here's what's going on north of the bearing here. You can see low pressure sweeping in a nice little mound of uh, higher seas there just north of the chain. Most of the chain looking at 25 to 30 knots, so you're looking at 10 to 11 foot seas, maybe 12 foot seas around Nikolsky to Atka, 13 to 14 foot seas there on the Pacific side. But the highest seas are going to stay north of the chain, it looks like, for Wednesday and then sweep eastward. The Pribilovs are right here for your point of reference. 30 knot winds coming in across the chain as we get into Thursday, 35 as you get into the central and eastern chain, in fact, and 14 to 18 foot seas there. Some of the highest, closest to land, Nikolsky and Unalaska there, will be dealing with a little bit more of a choppy sea than anywhere else. Uh, westerlies developing behind the wave, anywhere from 20 to 30 knots, 10 foot seas expected there. Let's take a look at the Pribilovs. Southerlies there on Wednesday, 30 knots with a 12 foot sea. You can see that broad offshore flow sweeping across the Yukon Delta. 30 knots with 7 to 8 foot seas, 14 foot seas around St. Matthew though, so watch for that. And then low pressure right about here. You can see the northerly winds around St. Matthew, the southwesterlies around St. Paul and St. George up to 40 knots. So watch out there, 22 foot seas developing and this will all swing into southwestern Alaska there. So again, if you have any reports of any coastal impacts from uh, that west and southwesterly flow, do let us know as we get into Thursday and Friday. Right now, no warnings out for any coastal areas. 17-foot seas there in the Kuskokwim Delta. Northeasterlies coming off of Norton Sound, 15 to 30. Southerlies for Nunavak Island. Over the ice, what's left of it, 25 knots from the south and west north of Prudhoe Bay. Onshore flow for the Chukchi, 25 knots with 6-foot seas down the coast. A look at Thursday shows smaller winds, smaller seas all the way around the Beaufort. Northwesterlies there, 2 to 3-foot seas there, and lighter winds across the Chukchi, diminishing to about 10 to 20 knots and 3 to 4-foot seas in the region. For your Thursday. A quick recap of your weather tonight shows low pressure in the bearing out across the region, 988 millibars there. High pressure across the Alaska Range in the eastern interior. Not enough to squash the showers. We'll see some of that continue for southeast after a soggy day. Cold front blasts its way into the Chukchi and into the Beaufort Sea. Uh, several waves working their way through northern Alaska this afternoon and into tonight and the rest of the week. Each one of those drops the temperature and starts to bring in the opportunity for some mixed precipitation. That could mean rain and snow where you are, but a better chance it will be at elevation around the Brooks Range Summit. So watch for that as we go forward. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.